Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Gamers Lounge, and this is Michael uh, with a review of something new. Oh bloody hell! It rhymed. I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. Now, the game in question, as you can see, uh, I'm sure you've pretty much recognised it. it. Was released a couple of days ago. This is Outcast 2: A New Beginning. Um, I think it looks stunning. First and foremost, you can't help but admire how incredible the game looks because it really, really does. Now, I haven't been enthusiastic about one of these since, well, the video I did beforehand, Lords of the Fallen. <laughs> and um, again, I have to say a big thank you to everyone who's commented on that one and who's viewed it because it's now gone up to uh, 14,000 views. Now, that, for somebody like me who doesn't know how to use YouTube very well, and who's not really that much of a, a good YouTuber, that's pretty much um, a great achievement. Now, um, I'm, I'm really, really chuffed by that, and I keep looking at it, and, you know, the amount of views just keeps going up and up and up, and, um, yeah, it's, it's just um, amazing. I didn't expect that, but uh, there you go. And as far as that game goes, they're still updating it, they're still patching it, so uh, there are still improvements to be made. Now... Outcast 2, A New Beginning, was uh, developed by Appeal Studios, and it was published by THQ Nordic. And um, now, there have been a couple of games prior to this one. There was an original one on PC, and then I think in 2017, did they not make another one for Windows? Uh, uh, yeah, for Windows, for PS4 and Xbox One, um, which is called Outcast Second Contact, or First Contact, or something like that, which... I've got, I just haven't played very much of it, but I'm inclined to try that one after I finish this one. Now, first of all, um, I'm not going to give you any spoilers about story, and the main reason for that is because I love the story. I'm really invested in it, and I'm loving these characters, and I'm really interested uh, in, in finding out, you know, what's going on. Now, it's... It's a very massive game. This open world, you can explore it as far as the eye can see. Now, I'm a fair bit into the game, but it feels like I've only just scratched the surface of it. I've tried exploring um, as much of this open world as I can. And, um, yeah, I think I've barely scratched the surface. So I'll try and uh, tell you a little bit about what it's about without spoiling too much. Now, you're trapped on this world um what you're trying to do now you play the part of um cutter slade and what a cool name he's got now this guy is pretty much a badass but the voiceover is is really cool he's very gently spoken and he sounds you know kind of cultured but gruff at the same time and he's somebody that you can relate to and somebody you don't want to mess with he's got plenty of punchlines. he's very quick-witted and um quite a lot of the dialogue really does make you smile and chuckle now uh, as I'm a, a little bit of the way into the game let's say I'm a, probably a quarter of the way into it maybe not even but um, yeah story I'm not going to spoil for you you really have to um, experience it for yourself because for those of you that you know like your open world action adventure games to have a really good deep story this one is going to have you hooked um pretty much like the souls games and laws of the fallen and so on and, and so forth you know they've got such a deep story and such a deep lore um this one has that same thing now for those of you that are my age group my generation um i'm 56 <laughs> um this game reminds me of um a few different games that i've played in my time and that i've loved now, if you take these games that I'm going to mention to you and roll them into one, uh, it makes this game. So we're talking about Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Um, do you remember on the original Xbox? I think it was a launch title. One of them is called Azuric Rise of Paravia. Um, the general atmosphere is very much like that. You're just visiting this very beautiful looking world and you've got this very gentle, fantastic orchestral soundtrack in the background um uh that was composed by lenny moore now he's their original composer 
who actually did this. So um, major kudos to him because this is one heck of an orchestral soundtrack. It's it has gently shifting moods, yet it's rousing when it needs to be just at the right times when you've got your various action sequences. Um, so you've got your skill trees that you can upgrade, as you can see here. Um, I've not upgraded every single one. Um, you've got consumables. Uh, these are your jetpack skills and your combat skills. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I still don't, don't have enough to upgrade that one. But um, you've got to collect um, these various components, these various rocks or crystals that will enable you to upgrade um, your weapons with all kinds of different modules, as they call them. And then you upgrade your jetpack. Now, top left-hand corner, I'm just upgrading my health there. Um, you can, The blue bars, they're in four segments. So I've upgraded my jetpack to its maximum, I believe, unless there's more to do. So when you first start the game, when you first find your actual jetpack, you only get one of those uh, segments. But I've got one, two, three, four. You press L1 and R1 and you have this um, wingsuit, which you can use to glide. But it runs out of juice pretty quickly if you make too many maneuvers. But, you know, just keep, uh, you know, going up and down with it. And you'll stay airborne. If you're running along the ground, you press L1 and R1 again, and you hover along the ground. And it's a nice, generally fast speed, so you can get out of trouble. You've got two weapons. At least I've got two weapons so far. You have a rifle. Oh, come on! Which you can aim and shoot things, or you have this gun here. Now, I've upgraded it with these sticky mines so they do a heck of a lot of damage you've got different difficulty settings so if you want to make the experience a little bit easier you can but it's still not that easy you have to use your shield now your shield you can upgrade that too so you can bash people with it like so and uh, you have to put your shield up every so often between shots very much like, do you remember the original flashback on the Mega Drive? Or Sega Genesis, as it's known in the US. Um, you shoot, and then when somebody shoots back at you, you put your shield up to deflect. So, I, I really wish I could tell you some of the story, but I'm just afraid I'm going to end up being tempted to tell you too much and just spoil it for you. But... Um, do get involved in the story. You talk to tons and tons of people. Um, the planet is called Adelpha, and its people are called the um, Talans. And um, they're sort of kind of cone-headed aliens, but they're, they're ever so charming, very, very friendly. And some of them are just downright hilarious. Uh, once you get your translator, you can hear them speaking back to you in English. Um, and some of them have the usual strange accents. Um, you know, proper, like, mainly American accents, one or two British. Um, and I'm sure I heard a Texan accent at one point, which it sounded really good. It was just strange, but really good, coming from an alien. Um, the world is massive. It's, it'll remind you of um, Pandora from the Avatar uh, movies and ultimately games now, because we have... An avatar game. Um, I've only encountered one glitch and here's where I get into the gameplay side of things. Um, there's the occasional bit of jankiness uh, in the traversal and in the combat but you can get used to it. I promise you you'll get used to it and it's an absolute pleasure to control the main character. Um, it has a couple of sound glitches. Uh, I had to come out of the game, you know, save it, come out and um, go back into it and the sound righted itself, but whether you're wearing headphones or you're using your surround sound system, um, the sound becomes very garbled, um, like somebody's gargling, and it sort of slows down a bit. You know, like when you play a record on a, a gramophone and you, you know, slow it down, it sounds a bit strange.
Yes, you have a melee attack as well. For some enemies, you have to hit only with a melee attack. And don't forget to pick up your components so you can upgrade yourself. You can swim in the sea. I'll show you that. You can swim in the sea. You press square. By the way, this is still running on my PS5. And um, yeah, so you press square to dive and you can go beneath the depths. You can, you've got your oxygen bar there, which is nice and long and quite generous. And there are things that you can find beneath uh, the surface of the water. And of course, when you've got your jetpack, you can hover on the surface of the water. And so on and so forth. That's pretty much it. Now, um, when it comes to the gameplay, why don't they make games like this anymore? I mean, this this little gem here, it's it's putting a lot of AAA titles to shame because it, it plays really nicely. Um, he's very easy to control. It's a really good combination of fantastic gunplay and exploration and really, really good storytelling. You've got dozens and dozens upon dozens of you know, quests, side quests, things that you have to do, people that you have to talk to, things that you can discover along the way, and you can either choose to discover them by accident um, or just by doing a, you know, a speed run playthrough of the main quest. But trust me, with this game, you don't want to do that. You just want to take your time with it. So it, it will last you, you know, hours and hours, weeks, months, um, it'll last you as long as you want it to, because there's just so much here to do. Um, it's an absolutely cracking game. And they really should make them like this more and more, because this has just got it down to basics. You run around, you shoot things, you aim, um, you can turn your aim assist on or off. Um, you can, you've got, you know, a few accessibility features that you can use. Um, that's all it is. You run around, you explore, you talk to people, um, strange alien people that are, like I said before, they're very, very charming. Um, and um, yeah, why don't they just make games like this? Why don't they keep making them like this? Yes, now you'll meet strange creatures that will intoxicate you sometimes. And did I say the, vi I'm sure I did touch on the visuals. They're incredible. Um, I just love these, you know, these 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 beautiful, vast, um, uh, you know, forest landscapes and you know mountains and, and rock shelves. There's icy tundras to explore. There's desert areas to explore as well. You can explore countless villages and and, and cities. Um, now these alien um, people are kind of stuck in the past because the the villages are very like oldie worldy in the sense that they're all you know made of wood they're wooden structures you know built by hand it looks like they were just you know constructed in like two or three weeks um yet they're incredible now these people need protecting from the invaders uh, that's as far as i'm going to go because you really have to experience the twists in the story by yourselves um you can tell how enthusiastic i am about it it's just i haven't been gripped by a game story and usually i don't really like rpgs myself because i just can't be bothered with the endless hours and hours and hours of dialogue um good case in point the metal gear franchise i know it's incredible and it is the gameplay the graphics especially of the later ones um, but the thing is, you can get bogged down in hours and hours and hours of bloody dialogue. Then you get two or three minutes of action, then it's back to hours and hours and hours of dialogue, and so on and so forth. And I just can't be asked. So I'm not a very good example of somebody who can tell you how good an RPG is, or an action RPG. But this one, this is one of the best I've ever played. A combination of uh, Elder Scrolls, um, Azeric Rise of Paradia. Um, a little bit of Horizon Forbidden West thrown in there for good measure. And, um, yeah, some fantastic run-and-gun gameplay. Um, I'm just running around here, 
mindlessly here because I'm just trying not to talk to people so I don't reveal any of the story. Um, but the minute you start talking to just one person, um, it'll have you hooked because you think, oh, I really want to find out about that. It's really bloody interesting, um, the stuff that you have to do. There's one or two sections in particular I like a little bit less. Um, kind of um, a little bit, they're parkour-like sections where you have to follow a little orb of light to find out where some altars are to activate them. And, and then you get the odd side quest where you have to do something similar. Um, nah, those sections I can take or leave. Uh, but the rest of it, I love. All this running around, discovering new places, blasting things that want to eat you, or just generally get you off the face of their planet. Um, but you really feel for these people. You really want to help them. You really, really want to help every single one. Um, there's one person I didn't manage to free from in incarceration, and I don't remember where that settlement was. It was one of the... Um, enemy settlements and I'm really gutted because I thought oh the poor bastard he's still stuck in there and I didn't manage to help him because I, I forgot <laughs> it's those feelings um, you get when you play this game it really hits on your emotions that that story is really cool anyway yes my recommendation my personal score a um, couple of tiny little bugs and one or two little bits of jankiness aside which you can easily overlook I can promise you that this game is um, eight and a half, even nine out of ten. Um, and it looks amazing. I would play it in performance mode, so it's considerably smoother. Um, but you can judge that for yourselves. But yeah, go for it. It's bloody good. Ciao, ciao.